question six, but I did want to bring up an analogy from David Bentley Hart. He talks about, you know, imagine you're at a dinner party. Are you familiar with this? Yes. And on the top floor, you're having a party. There's there's beer, there's music. It's just wonderful. You're hanging out with God. It's the best world ever. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's the best party ever, rather. But in the basement, there are people being tormented and they're locked to, you know, chains yeah. and whatnot. And you know this, though. You know this. Yeah. You know, your your moral intuition is going to tell you, we got to do something about this. We have to free them. Um, but we're told to, you know, this is good. In God's eyes, this is good. Um, yeah. So I, I just thought that was fascinating, you know, and, and it runs into further problems, too, how God could expunge from his mind yeah. these persons. And remember, his mind is constituted in such a way where it's just infinite love. Yeah. Yeah. And even for 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 us at the party, we have to expunge from our minds, our loved ones that are being tormented forever. Yeah. And then, you know, people have said, well, God's actually going to expunge that from his mind and your mind. So you'll just forget them. You see, that is disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that that is a powerful image. And uh, there's some there's several ways uh, in which Hart has shared in both in writing and in, in like interviews about how disturbing is that idea that it mm -hmm. could be, you know, that any person could be expunged from our minds. That's a part of our own, who we are, you know, like I'm, I'm a product of everyone I've had a relationship with yes, yes. and that, that I could then, you know, I think Hart says something like, you know, God's going to have to make a fake you, you know, in order <laughs> to, to spend eternity with you, if he's putting this other person in, in it, yeah. each conscious torment um none of us can be really you know who we are um Absolutely. so have you ever heard of the short story the ones who walk away from omalas by ursula k Le Guin? i have not she she has uh, very similar to the story of the parable kind of that you told from david benny hart of the, the ultimate party uh you know yeah yeah <laughs> of these these poor souls suffering uh, in chains in the basement but somehow you're still able to enjoy the party um mm -hmm. and have horrible that would be um it's a brilliant uh, and and well-loved short story um by her um you know about a whole kingdom where uh it's it's a perfect world but there's one little child that has to be perpetually kept uh, mm -hmm. in darkness in a basement and the whole the whole flourishing of the kingdom depends on that and then the ones who walk away from omelas are like they it's so horrific they wander off into the desert to mm -hmm. escape the beauty of this perfect kingdom that is somehow sort of powered by this one sacrificed child, not sacrificed on an altar fire, but but chained in a basement. Wow, that's powerful. A human interaction, yeah. yeah it's, it's it's a horrifically uh, devastating story uh, and a condemnation of, of, of ultimately of this idea of uh, you know eternal conscious torment. Absolutely, and I just to backtrack a bit, I loved what you said about um, how you know our current selves right now are predicated on a, a cascade of contingencies. I yeah. mean, really imagine certain memories of persons being wiped out of your mind. I mean, you would not be who you are. You wouldn't no, be. No, you wouldn't be. You'd, you wouldn't you'd, be. you'd be a, a totally artificial, you know, mm -hmm. um, puppet created out of some pieces of yourself in order to, you know, um, keep, keep God happy in heaven forever. Yeah. Um, but you wouldn't be who you are.